Now, you might be thinking, well, I've tried wet food. I've tried raw food. My cat doesn't want to eat it. He only wants to eat dry food. This is very common because dry food is high in carbohydrates, even if it's grain-free. And manufacturers know that cats are not grain and carb eaters by choice, right? They eat muscle, meat, bones, and organs their entire prey. So they have to come up with a way to entice the cat to eat enough of it so that it's actually nutritious. And they do this with flavor enhancer palatins. And they basically spray these on the food so that it's a strong smell. And the cat is, is like, ooh, I wanna eat this. And then unfortunately the cats often develop an addiction to these palatins. And that's why they become so picky about switching foods because if you're trying a wet food or a raw food that doesn't have these flavor enhancer palatins, they're, your, your cat's basically like, I want my junk food. I don't want this good food. It's kind of like how we get a little addicted to sugar. Seriously, you know, candy, chips, these same companies also make cat food. He's literally addicted to this food. And, and that's, you know, the unfortunate truth about dry food. That's why your cat is so picky about it because he wants his junk food. Now, the next truth about dry cat food that we'll talk about is the low quality meats that are included in it called 4D meats. And that stands for dead, diseased, dying, disabled. And AFCO says that this is allowed and these are typically meat byproducts and meat meals. AFCO states that these low quality ingredients are allowed in pet food as long as those ingredients are rendered. And rendering means that it's subjected to high heat and high pressure. And they say that this is to kill any potential bacteria that is in these diseased meats. But what about euthanasia drugs? You know, there are pet food recalls for pentobarbital and all of these euthanasia drugs. That explains how it happens because they have these diseased, dying feed animals. They want to the farmers want to sell them because they want to make money, obviously. They're in business to make money. So they're going to do what they can to make those animals healthy again. If they're diseased and on their way out, they're going to be giving them medication. And you know, these medications and potentially euthanasia drugs will end up in the pet's food if they're using these 4D meats. Yes, high heat and high pressure might kill bacteria, but that doesn't do anything to these drugs. There's a CRS report for Congress on the animal rendering industry that covers this topic extensively, and they state that these renderers convert billions and billions of pounds of these diseased carcasses into not only pet food, but also human products like cosmetics, candles, and, and other things that we probably have no idea about. And the report states that most of these animals come from farms, but they could also come from feedlots, marketing barns, and even animal shelters, plus food waste from restaurants and stores. So I've said this before that commercial pet food is essentially a recycling bin for the human food waste industry. And that report right there proves it, that it's kind of like baloney. You just like throw everything together and be like, yeah, let's just package it up and say that it's premium. Also, I would, I would like to mention that there are companies that specify which animal they're using and the part that they're using. For example, they will say turkey thigh, turkey liver, turkey heart, instead of poultry byproducts. See, that term poultry byproducts is very vague because there are a lot of animals that fit under the poultry category. Do they not know? Is it that there are just too many different sources that they can't specify which type of bird it is? And then the byproducts part means that it's essentially leftovers from the human food industry, stuff that we don't consider to be edible, like lungs and udders and some of the organs like that. But it could also be beaks, feathers, feet. Now, of course, the cat would eat the entire prey, so that would include the feet and the fur and the feathers, but that isn't their main source of their meat. The entire prey is about 80% muscle meat. Then there's about 10% bone, 10% organ. So if it's only feet and feathers and beaks, that's not sustainable protein that's suitable for a cat. And we have no idea of knowing which parts they're using because all they say is poultry byproducts.
instead of turkey thigh, chicken breast, chicken liver, chicken heart. I hope that makes sense. Now I hear you saying my cat won't eat anything but dry food. I've tried everything. I made a specific transition plan formulated for picky cats. You can check that out right over Mia. Thank you so much for watching.